couple of months ago, Flashbots introduced Roll Up Boost. Roll Up Boost. Roll Up Boost. Ethereum. Roll Up Boost. Ethereum. Roll Up Boost. Roll Up Boost. Which is extension for Roll Ups enabled by PE technology, powering Unichain and World Chain. In this video, we will check out what exactly is that, how does it work, and why is this a game changer for Ethereum's rollup centric roadmap. Hey everyone, Uttam here, Devrel Engineer at Alchemy. Before discussing rollup boost, a little bit of context here. Four years ago, the Ethereum community took a bold move and decided to follow Ethereum's rollup centric roadmap, which represents Ethereum's strategic shift towards scaling the network by embracing rollups as primary solutions and with this vision ethereum becomes a more robust and secure settlement layer while most activities takes place on these rollups there are a lot of benefits to the rollup centric roadmap that we have achieved like increased tps transaction cost has been reduced we are seeing a lot of innovations in layer 2 ecosystem like alt vms zk adoptions and innovations but we are still struggling with censorship and decentralization. To provide fast inclusion guarantees to users, most rollups today utilize a centralized private mempool which only the sequencer can access while that can benefit user experience but it also reduces the transparency and centralizes the block building process around the sequencer. And most of the big rollups are still in stage 0 or 1. Rollup Boost introduces the idea of rollup extension which are modular components for upgrading rollup in performance programmability and decentralization these extensions are only the start the plan is turning rollup boost into like a highly modular platform supporting features such as t validity proofs from multi-prover systems allowing rollups to reach stage 2 easier fully encrypted mempools the co-processing power for apps but before getting into rollup boost working and features let's discuss what the technology is and why is there so much buzz around it and what are the properties of TE. So TE stands for Trusted Execution Environment. Think of TE as a secure temper resistant black box where transaction can be executed while maintaining privacy and integrity. The cool thing is that computation can occur off chain while retaining the characteristics so lightning fast execution is the norm. A common example of how the biometrics data like fingerprints or Facial recognition is processed on a mobile devices within RTE. It's a secure section within our hardware, such as the CPU that operates independently from the rest of the system to safely process the sensitive data. T ensures that the trusted code can run securely even if the external environment is compromised. So T gives you like two really interesting guarantees. One is on integrity. So with a TE, you can actually have a guarantee down to the hash of the code what is being executed inside of our TEE. You can verify that a certain program is running and you know exactly how this T is going to handle your information or your code. This is an interesting property in the context of crypto. As an example, you can say the rollup is going to sequence your transaction in a certain way or it's not going to share your transaction before it includes it uh, on chain, right? And the second guarantee is privacy. So TE has a level of privacy even from the party that is operating the TE. So if you have the physical uh, TE itself, you can't in see inside of the TE and take the information outside it, right? Unless it is programmed specifically to do that. And what this gives you is the ability to decentralize things that otherwise previously were relying on some form of social trust to maintain privacy that really matters in the context of an L2 because users want these private mempools where no one else can see their trades before it lands on chain as such so that they can't get front run, right? Uh, T do all of this with a minimal amount of performance overhead. Meanwhile, ZK proofs, as an example, or FHE are, you know, uh, pretty slow. But by using this form of spatial hardware, you can get close to no performance overhead. Coming back to Rollup Boost, it is going to launch with two extensions for now. First one is 250 milliseconds flash blocks with native reward protection. And the other one is verifiable priority ordering within each 
flash block so what is flash block so flash block is a streaming layer that gives user near instant ux while still running an explicit auction every 250 milliseconds so flash box draw inspiration from innovations in the block creation and execution such as solana shreds and uh, celestia's data squares so it uh, splits a single block into four parts with each partial block being created every 250 milliseconds and sent to the sequencer and the sequencer continuously downloads these partial blocks while simultaneously executing these transaction and provide users with early execution um, confirmations these partial blocks are guaranteed to be included in the final proposed block by the sequencer this process allows for faster state updates reducing latency improving user experience and mitigating malicious mev using pe architecture l2s can have one second block times but gives transaction confirmations to end users a quarter of the time which is 250 milliseconds using pre-confirmations roll-up boost verifiable Ordering allows users to verify how their transactions are executing by leveraging the information security properties of the TE, which we just talked about, and the ability to clearly, credibly commit to any ordering rule also opens a new design space for ordering algorithms and available on Ethereum L1. And now getting into the architecture, in Ethereum, we have two clients. One is the consensus client and another one is the execution client. And we also have something called engine API. And it is how the consensus client and the execution clients talk to each other, right? And in order to be maximal Ethereum compatible, idly one is using this engine API in their layer two architecture. So Rollup Boost software sits between consensus client and execution client, and these clients use an additional API. Uh, these there are stacks like OP stacks who use this architecture too. In the OP stack, the engine API is replicated, so it uses the exact same engine API calls as the Ethereum L1 client. What does this mean is that Rollup Boost can reuse the engine API by having the Rollup Boost act as a multiplexer and then can proxy the request to other components in the ecosystem like a block builder. So people can add customization to their chains like reward protection or faster uh, pre-confirmations, right? Uh, under the rollup centric roadmap, rollups must over time transition to stage 2 decentralization, which calls for trustless fault proofs. Ts can accelerate this process by acting as a second proven in addition to an optimistic or ZK proof system, allowing them to depower their security console and transition to stage 2 faster. Rollups can use TEs to implement multi prover for faster finality and increase safety from prover. Bucks. That being said, if you are planning to launch your own rollup with or without rollup boost, we are here to help you. We provide developers with end to end solutions to deploy fully serviced production ready rollups with all essential infrastructure as of day one. Alchemy is the most reliable and scalable infrastructure provider in Web3. So feel free to reach out to us or visit alchemy.com. Uh, thanks for watching.